Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. Meet the trusted experts who will give you straight answers and will help guide you on the path of later life care. Now, here's your host, founder, caregiver, and CEO, Suzanne Newman. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders Radio Network. And we are here with Dr. Sean Weiss. And we're talking about communication with those who are cognitively impaired. And certainly, if you're a family caregiver out there, you've had some challenges in communication. And Sean, I love this topic. And I I, I hope you'll indulge me. I have a great story to tell you. Um, I remember my mother, no matter how bad her dementia uh, got, she would push my buttons. She would push my buttons. And I'm telling you, there were times when I was about ready to lose it. And I learned something. I learned that we need to have a, a, um, a use for our friends. And I always say use, how many of us have friends out there that say, I wish there's something I could do, Suzanne. I'm so sorry you're going through this with your mom. And I'll say, and I learned, you know what? I need you to help me laugh. I need you to bring laughter. And so I would leave her apartment. I would walk around the block. I would call one of those girlfriends and I'd say, you never guess what mom just did. And we made, I mean, we would talk about things. We would laugh. And I was fine when I came back and, you know, I cannot thank those friends enough because they kept me sane. And I think one of the things that we do is we forget that there are people around us that can support us as family caregivers. And that in those frustrating situations, take a walk (laughs) Um, was a big, big thing for me. Yeah, one of the one of the topics I I do and services on frequently is caregiver burnout. And when you are the person that is primarily in charge, and sometimes mm-hmm. it might just be you. Um, I've come across that you know hundreds of times in the last twenty five yeah. years, where the daughter is it. You know, brother doesn't live nearby. Mom moved in with the daughter, and she's had to like either stop working or have somebody come in and help while she just goes to the grocery store. Yep. Caregiver burnout is real. Caregiver burnout, especially since COVID, is a very real thing. And you'll find, you know, if you are getting burned out, those symptoms of burnout, you know, depression, not sleeping, easily frustrated, that's when you need to take a step back and really work on your self care. Mm-hmm. You know, you cannot properly take care of somebody else if you're not taking no. care of yourself. You, no. you want to give them your best, right? Because there's going to be a day when they're not there. And you know, it is because it's such an overwhelming job. Um, it's one of the most honorable, rewarding things you'll ever do taking mm-hmm. care of a loved one as they progress through any type of dementia, but it is mm-hmm. frustrating. Yeah. Give yourself some grace with that. Mm-hmm. Um, it will try your patience. Mm-hmm. You're going to learn a lot about yourself. You know, You're going I, was to, ju- yeah. I was just speaking to someone um, yesterday who her husband, her husband, and I think it's even harder on spouses. um, Her husband has frontal temporal um, dementia and he's had it for like six years. And she says, you know, he's still, I have cameras in every room. I work full time. I'm constantly checking on him. And she goes, it's hard. And I said, you have to take care of yourself. You have to do these things. And she goes, you know, the hardest things is all the things that we dreamed and planned for are gone. And I think of, you know, the sadness, the despair, but also, you know, the frustration, he's not the same person she married. He's not the same, um, you know, and, and that scenario is so difficult to hear. And my heart just, it's just overwhelming goes, you got to take care of yourself. You don't have any time for yourself. And I think some of the things we don't talk enough about, the spouse of someone that has cognitive impairment. I think that is overwhelming. I mean, most of the time, especially as the disease progresses, it's, it's Mm -hmm. always much, much harder on the family than it is the actual, the actual person Exactly. simply because um, you're watching it and, and that's, it's incredibly overwhelming and it's, it's sad. And um, like I said, the burnout is is real and that burnout will cause you to be more <clears throat> easily agitated and more frustrated with your loved ones. And you need to recognize right. that if you recognize that your temper 
is, you know, you're having a short fuse more and more, then it's time for you to step back and maybe see your care provider, right? You True. need to find ways to distress. Again, ha- seeing friends, having somebody to vent to um, is incredibly important, especially if you're the, if you're a spouse. Yeah. Um, but a son or daughter who, again, who's a primary caregiver, find that outlet for yourself. But also take care of your physical health, not just your emotional health. You need to stay hydrated. You need to have proper nutrition. You need to exercise. All those things that you just feel too darn tired to do because you've spent mm-hmm. all day taking care of somebody, that will catch up with you. And what you'll find is when you when you take that time for yourself, that you will be better. And you'll mm-hmm. find those incidences of short fuses are, are less mm-hmm. and less yeah. when you don't feel guilty about taking the time well, for and yourself. I think- Speaking of not feeling guilty, don't feel guilty to hire home care to come in and give yourself a break. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times people, they won't make that step because they're still in denial about how much uh, overwhelmed they're in. And the other thing about the whole situation, I think that a lot of times it's like when I talked to this person yesterday, I said, First, I'm going to give you some unsolicited advice. You need to have a home care agency lined up. I don't care if you don't call them mm-hmm. today, but there may come a day that you're sick, that you may not, that you may need help, and you don't want to be in a situation where you're going to be interviewing people to see if they're going to be a fit when you're in a desperate situation. Yeah. Find them now. Get you your information, yep. put your information on file. So that all you have to do, you find out how much it's going to be. There isn't this, <clears throat> you know, misnomer out there of, I don't even know where to start. And so you go down that rabbit hole. It's so much better to know that you have a resource. You may not call it for a while, but you still know who it is. You know what the scenario is going to be. And <clears throat> she goes, you know, I will do that. So it was, it was an interesting conversation, but I think it's one we don't have enough with people that are yeah, caring. For exactly our- right. I mean, we advocate, like I said, for our patients, one of the biggest things we do is, is preparation is education first, right? Just educating because knowledge is power. Mm-hmm. And the more you are prepared for what is coming, because again, it is progressive. We're going to do our best to preserve function. We're going to do our best to prevent falls. We're going to do our best to keep them as strong and mentally active as well, whether that's through exercise, nutrition, sure. medic, you know, all of those things. But when it, when it comes down to it, you have to, um, you have to like make sure that you're taking care of yourself and you need to make sure that um, you are, are finding people that can help. Yeah. When you prepare for something, you don't know how quickly that's going to come. No. You don't know how quickly. So what we help with, and like I said, you know, there's skilled home health and it's non, non-medical home health. Non-medical home health typically is one of the first things that are utilized. But honestly, the skilled home health through their insurance can come in in terms of help with strengthening, exactly. help with balance, help with falls. But the non-medical, knowing who is in your town, knowing what their charges are, it can be, hey, I just want to get out of the house each day, whether it's to go to the grocery, whether it's just to go and get my hair done, anything Ooh. like that. Something like that is so valuable that you mm-hmm. will not even believe how that works for your emotional health, yeah, for yeah. your well-being. <clears throat> and you come back refreshed and you come back ready yeah. and you cannot feel guilty about it. But it, it it's okay. You have plenty of trusted people um, around you that you can utilize. And you're exactly right. Prepare for it because as the dementia progresses, again, you want to start thinking about safety. You want to start preparing the home. You mm-hmm. want to know that, okay, right now I could, they can be left alone for a few hours, but that's not going to happen. You know, uh, fast forward a few months down the road, mm-hmm. you don't want mom or dad getting out. Um, are you taking the keys? You know, those types of conversations and healthcare providers yeah. are great with giving <clears throat> you direction in how to handle that and prepare for what's coming down the road because you don't want to mm-hmm. wait till it's too late. Um, you don't want to wait for something bad to happen Yeah, to be forced to quickly make an adjustment um, and, and maybe not find the right people. Yeah. And you know, when you, <clears throat> and that's the piece that I think some, some of us miss that we're in that situation where we're caring for someone in the home, especially a spouse. Oh my goodness. How many people do I talk to every day that their loved one, their spouse 
has Alzheimer's and they start wake up some days and they don't even know them and they're dealing, they think they're with a stranger and all the different uh, scenarios that happen. And, you know, how do we as, you know, as professionals say, it's it's not it's out of your hands. You've got to get professional um, intervention, and whatever that means, what is right. Maybe it is time to bring someone into the home and be a home caregiver. Maybe they're to the point where they're going to need a, a higher level of care. But the point of the matter mm-hmm. being is they that remember there are resources. And that's the thing I think that sometimes people forget about. They think that this it's all on them and it's all on their shoulders. Yeah, and not forget about the fact that, like I said, I strongly encourage if you are taking care of a loved one to utilize skilled home health services. Your physician can write an order for that. Yes. Especially occupational the Medicare therapy. pays for it. Yes, um, you know, we utilize our occupational therapist to go in with somebody, every single person has any type of cognitive impairment, they get a cognitive leveling assessment done. And that way we can know what their baseline is. We know what level they're on. But mm-hmm. with that, the most important thing is, you know, we're not going to communicate that to the patient, mm-hmm. but we are going to communicate that to all the caregivers that are helping you with that patient. Yes. And it will give you a guideline. It will give you protocols on, mm-hmm. yeah, here's some activity suggestions for this level of mm-hmm. cognitive impairment. Here's ways to communicate better. Here are things they can learn and cannot learn. Um, so having those templates where Mm -hmm. a skilled professional can come in and give you that. And then it also gives you a nice baseline to reassess down the road when things may start going down a hill and you want to see what the changes are. And Sean, I think one, I'm just going to bring up the other side of it. A professional can help you understand as a caregiver that doesn't understand really what the objective is for care. I, I, I mean, one of the things that was really I was never communicated. My mom was in a level of palliative care, which meant she's not going to get better. But I kept thinking, why is she on all these pills? Why are they doing it? If somebody would have sat me down and say, that is not the goal of her, of her care. You know, her goal is her, her category of care is called palliative care. We do not see that she's going to get better. Her, her goal is to be comfortable. And eventually that will move into hospice. The point as had somebody educated me on that one piece, and that was because I didn't reach out to people like you, I would have had so many less sleep, sleepless nights because I would wake up and say, oh my God, my mom's on all these pills. Oh, it's just terrible. I don't know how to get her off. I don't know what to do. And it was like, mm-hmm. Dan, leave it alone. <laughs> well, but let me tell you, because I didn't the know. Main- yeah, one of the main, and, and this is a valuable piece of information, is you know one of the main diagnoses that we see for under skilled home health that is covered under Medicare is any of the types of dementias, right? Yes. Whether it's with behavioral symptoms or not, that is justifiable for a skillable um, visit that for skillable mm-hmm. therapies. One because um, you know there's a big huge controversy right now, and Medicare is having to backpedal because these Medicare Advantage plans. Um, are really not doing a very good job of approving medical no. necessity for home health care. And yeah. it's just less this past week, they came out with saying, hey, uh, we're going to we're going to do a better job, especially with nursing. But something to remember is that maintenance cannot, you know, maintenance therapy is is approved and billable for home health. You do not have to make progress. True. You know, that came back in 2013 with a uh, Jimmo versus Sibilis uh, ruling uh, at the court level, the national mm-hmm. level, to where mm-hmm. you do not have to show progress in order to be eligible for skilled home health services. That's amazing. If you are preserving function, if you are preserving their ability to get up and out of their chair safely, to do their self-care, if you're preserving, if you're preventing falls, if what you are doing as a home health agency therapist is coming in and keeping them strong, working on their balance, and they haven't fallen, they haven't had to go to the hospital, they haven't had to have an unnecessary ER trip Mm -hmm. or unplanned doctor's visit because of those things, that is goes under the maintenance therapy rule for Medicare. And Mm -hmm. it can get paid for and they should not be denying that. And um, any insurance that's denying that they need to be reminded that they follow, they have to follow Medicare guidelines on the maintenance rule. So Medicare is going to always rather 
keep somebody safe in their home than mm-hmm. wait for something bad to Absolutely. happen. Absolutely. Wait for them to break a hip and then go to the hospital, have surgery, go to the nursing home. They would much rather have an agency come in and keep tabs on their health. Correct. To, to and do wellness and prevention. Yeah, exactly. Imagine that. Wellness and what prevention, imagine. right? So you have a free guide. Tell us about your free guide. I do. And we get it. Yeah. Um, on my website, seniorhealthandwellness.org, you will see a link that says free guide. You'll also see um, right beside it, it'll say seminar. And I do teach the Alzheimer's disease and dementia care seminar, which can just be for caregivers. You don't have to be a healthcare professional. Although if you are, you can get mm-hmm. nursing and therapy CEUs. Mm-hmm. There is the link right beside the free guide. If you want to check out that and spend a awesome. day with me on a Zoom course. I would be glad to have you. Well, that would be awesome. And Dr. Sean Weiss, as usual, we love having you on Answers for Elders. And um, thank you again. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. We at Answers for Elders, thank you for listening. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.